Hey everyone, this is um, Jared Peck again, giving you another update. I'm at home where I have been for a while. We're all here, including, let me see, this is weird because I got the camera the wrong way, but let me, including Moki, our doggy. So let me have her say hi. hi. Say hi, Moki. Where are you at? Oh, there she is. That's Moki. That's our doggo. So, she's a bit of a handful. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're all at home, and I, I doubt you can see it, but if you look behind me, uh, that's my junky little car park garage. Oh, you kind of can see the flakes. So, it's snowing. It was snowing really hard most of the morning, uh, but it really has lightened up now. It's just not coming down so much, and as you can see on the ground, it hasn't stuck. It's just melting, but kind of fun it's that time of year when the weather <clears throat> can do just about anything so last week we were in t-shirts today it's snowing so uh, i had talked uh earlier about what was going on with the pandemic and and how it was affecting us um and in this video i'm just going to talk a little bit about ministry updates for ingrid and i in terms of what we're doing and uh not so much about that Although it, it does impact some things that are happening. So, uh, you know, I realized that we've been doing this for a while now. We've been doing it for 16 years. We've been uh, missionaries with crew. Uh, now the first uh, seven, we were in the States. And then the last almost nine now, we've been here in Hungary, working in Central and Eastern Europe. So, um yeah and I, it just made me think there's a lot of you that maybe uh you've been with us a long time but you're not you know i don't know we try to talk about what's going on but we also try to talk about the ministries we support so uh, you may not know exactly what we have going on personally and uh some of you may be new and it'd be good for you to be kind of updated on what we have going on so uh i'll start with ingrid because uh, she's the smarter, better one of the two of us. She teaches full-time at the International Christian School of Budapest, ICSB. It is a school that was started by mission organizations for missionary kids. And so <clears throat> the kids go there. It's an American-style school that prepares them to go to American University. Uh, in fact, when I talk to Hungarians in our neighborhood or around, they just call it the American school over there, so... Uh, and uh, so Ingrid is there and she is teaching math and she is also teaching girls weights which she really enjoys she loves it she loves the workouts she has fun uh, I think it's a great for her, way for her to keep active and, and so she's having a great time with that um, and She's keeping busy with that. She also is a sponsor for the, what is currently the sophomore class. So, it's really uh, an important job uh, on a number of levels. One, one that might be the most obvious, is that uh, as missionaries, when you decide to follow God's call and go live overseas, your kids are a big part of that call. We believe that children are called. Just like the parents, that they're not just like ride-alongs, but they're here to be a part of it with us. Um, but it's great that they have this really good education uh, opportunity there. It's a place where they have community, they can grow, and it also gives them a lot of options. Because someday uh, they are going to leave home, like all kids hopefully do, and um, they're going to head into the world and we love that ICSB prepares them to have a lot of options and different opportunities and just be in a place where they can take advantage of some of those so the girls went there till they graduated and Ed's a junior and he's a, you know next year he'll graduate from there um, so Ingrid teaches there and she loves doing that being a resource to help missionaries come here and serve and know that their kids are well cared for over the years, the school has grown in its capacity. So they actually were able to have students that are not missionary kids. 
So there are a number of students who come to the school who are Hungarians or from a lot of other countries, um, and their parents just want them in a, an English-speaking school. So uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but just off the top of my head, we have kids from Albania, Moldova, Belarus, Hungary, China, Korea, uh, what am I missing, Romania, uh, do, do, do. there's more, I know there are more, so, and I'm missing some of them, but, I mean, it's an international school, it really is, and it's, it's a fun place to be, and not all those kids are Christians, not all the missionary kids are Christians, necessarily, I mean, it's something we really hope and pray for, but, uh, so Ingrid has an opportunity to share Christ with kids, to um, be involved in building up Christian kids and in sharing the gospel with kids who are not believers. She leads a Bible study right now with some young women, and it's just been an awesome opportunity. Um, and so she gets to be a part of a team who cares for and loves those kids and really just tries to do their best to to instill in them a sense of who they are in God and and how God loves them and how he has a plan for their life. And so I'm really thankful for that as well. That's a big part of her ministry. Um, <clears throat> so that's Ingrid's primary focus. I'm really thankful that crew allows her to work there and that that's her assignment. They value the school. A lot of the teachers and some of the administration are crew staff like us. And then others come from other missionary organizations like Teach Beyond or Reach Global, different ones. So... Um, it, you know, it occurs to me when I say this, when I talk about our ministry, what I'm, what, I'm prob what I'm focusing on in this video is our vocational ministry. And so that's the thing that we are paid to do in a sense. Uh, I'm going to show you this because this is happening behind me. But, and again, I don't know how well it will come out on my phone, but the snow is starting to pick up pretty good again. Anyway, so I'm talking about our vocational ministry that in a, it doesn't sound the nicest what I say, but kind of like the ministry we're paid to do. Uh, there are people who financially support us to be here, and that money allows us to be freed up for our full-time job to be these roles. Now, we still have personal ministry in the sense that we're involved in a local church. Uh, we're involved in different people's lives. We try to build friendships with neighbors and friends. We try to look for opportunities to share the gospel, and we do other things. That, that doesn't stop just because we say, oh, we're you know, missionaries, so we only have to do this, and then that other stuff we don't have to worry about. So uh, just like any of you who aren't in vocational ministry, you go to work, which for you is a better mission field than my work is now because I mostly work with Christians. But um, And you have those opportunities, and then you still do ministry also apart from that. Well, for us, it's the same way. It's just that you guys have made it possible for us for the ministry part to be what we do during the work day, and we, we do the personal. Anyway. I hope you already knew that, but I felt like it was worth pointing out that when I don't mention those things, it's not because we don't do them. It's because the focus I'm focusing on here is just, just that one part. Uh, for me, it can be confusing what I do to people sometimes. Uh, not what I do to people. It can be confusing what I do for people uh, to understand. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'm really funny to me. Uh, so anyway... Uh, let me. I, I try to put it as simply as I can, but basically, uh, there are 19 countries in our region. In every one of those countries, we have ministries, and those ministries are working to share the gospel with people, to disciple the people who come to Christ, and teach them to share the gospel and disciple the people who come to Christ. We call that movement building. We want Christ centered, multiplying disciples all over the world. That's what Crew's doing everywhere on the planet. and my responsibility is in this 19, in these 19 countries, in this chunk of the world, uh, I come alongside those national ministries and I try to help them. Every one of them has different needs. They're different sizes. We have countries with over 100 staff. We have countries with five staff. Um, but those people need to get paid. They need to be able to reimburse ministry expenses. They need to be able to... Uh, communicate with others. They need websites. They need to be able to collaborate and work. They need to be able to do video conferencing. They're, they need to be able to hold conferences and register people for those conferences. Uh, they need 
to be able to manage their contact lists and send out communication to the people who are interested in their ministry. There's so many things that go into the infrastructure of running a ministry, and I try to come alongside those ministries and help them with those things specifically and how they can use technology to do those things in a way that's affordable and doesn't take a lot of manpower, right? I mean, you can do all those things. If you have an army of people, you can do all those things just with people. You can brute force all that. But in today's world, with the blessings that technology brings in certain ways, we can do a lot of it with very few people without a lot of cost, but do a good job. I try to help countries do that using the, the technical expertise I developed uh, over my years working in private industry and then in the years I've been doing this now with crew. So uh, I love it because our national staff in our countries are some of the best people I've ever met. I mean, just phenomenal. It, it, I, I wish I could just bring everyone who's a part of our ministry team here and just spend time. I, I had a dinner once. This is going to sound funny and I'm not trying to be like what do they call that, humble bragging or whatever, but I'm having dinner in Zagreb with a team that I'm working with, right? And, uh, and around the table is a guy from Russia, a guy from Poland, a guy from Moldova, uh, a woman from Croatia, a woman from Ukraine, and me. And we're talking about our, our life stories. And they're telling me about growing up and how they came to faith. And we talked about war. We talked about Cold War, being behind the Iron Curtain, uh, a number of things. And uh, it was moving. And, and these are people who passionately love God and serve Him with everything they have. And uh, anyway, it's humbling, and I'm grateful to be able to be a part of it. Uh, so that's what I do in a nutshell. I've thought about doing a video where I talk about what I do in detail. Like, kind of nitty gritty. I think there are two, two ways it could be useful to people. Uh, one is there are some of you maybe who are technically oriented and you might like it. Like you'd be like, hey, this is cool. Like I didn't know they did that or oh, that's how they do that. And the other one is that some of you may have insomnia and I feel like, you know, 30, 45 seconds of a video like that and you'll be asleep. You know, I, I think it would be a win-win. So we'll see what happens. Um... So yeah, so that's kind of a ministry update for us in a nutshell. Uh, Ingrid is doing everything from home now, of course. Uh, she's working her tail off. She's making videos for her kids, doing live video conferencing, uh, having kids take pictures of their homework and send it to her so she can grade it. And let me tell you, uh, math homework written in pencil, photographed with a phone, it's a lot of work for her. Um, but she's just that way. In fact, she's putting videos on YouTube, and I should, I'll try to post a link to one. And you can see the, in person, she, to the math classroom, she brings this really dynamic, exciting environment. And she's trying to replicate that in video. And it's not easy, but she's doing, doing her best. I mean, uh, you know, imagine you don't have to look far to find what it's like when they're not dynamic. It's like, <laughs> sorry. Hey, if you've made it this far. Uh, your tolerance is high. Anyway, but for, imagine for teenagers, you know, uh, it's a different ball game, And they're used to videos that are really exciting and full of all this craziness. Um, so she's working really hard on that. Uh, Ed, I don't think Ed's terribly upset. Uh, he wakes up, grabs his laptop, and he's in school. Uh, he did, he's the president of the student council this year. He did a student council meeting this afternoon over video conferencing. I mean, he's just, uh, he's, he's hanging in there. <laughs> he's doing all right. So, um, yeah. So that's everything in a nutshell. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our team. Thank you for praying for us. Uh, if you give financially to support us, thank you. Uh, we, we appreciate it. It means a lot to us. You know, I don't know if all the people who will see this realize, but our ministry partner team is decent size. It's over 100 people. And, you know, we send out, we send out like 250 newsletters a month, um, which we just sent one recently, so you should get one soon if you get that. 
Uh, you already got an email if you get an email. Um, but, uh, and it's people we've known for a long time. Um, it's people we've never met face to face. It's this really diverse group that God brought together to put us here. And um, it's humbling. It's amazing. It, it leaves me flabbergasted at times. Uh, the days when I feel like I don't know what I'm doing or if I had to be here, it's a part of what reminds me that God put this together and provided for us. Um, and it, as you can see, looking at me, we've always had everything we need, uh, plenty to eat, a roof over our heads. So he's taking care of us. And I think uh, we're coming up on what could be some times of having to be even more disciplined and, and tighten the belt a bit more. But I think together as the body of Christ, we're going to have an awesome opportunity to uh, be a light to people. So, as always, if we can pray for you, let us know how. Uh, please communicate that with us and we will pray. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I will talk to you again soon. I, I said I, would, I wanted to do three updates to kind of kick this off. So the last one was about what was going on with the pandemic. This one's about our ministry and what we do. Uh, the next one will probably be a little more focused just on our personal lives. And it's just some updates. I, I, with this group, it's really diverse, right? Like some of you are probably like, you know, I just want to know what you guys are doing and how is my investment into God's kingdom going. Others of you are probably like, yeah, you know, whatever, we know you're doing that, but, like, show me a picture of your kids, right? Like, so I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to cover all the bases. Uh, and I'm thankful that you're all interested and invested on all those levels. It, it means a lot to us in every way. Uh, the girls, as they've gotten a little nervous sometimes as all this is going on and they're back in the U.S. and we're here, I've told them we have so many friends in America who will step up and help you if you need it. Uh, and we're already seeing that, and I thank you for those who already offered to help with different things. But uh, God's really good to us, and he's really good to us primarily through you, and, and we appreciate that. So uh, take care. God bless you, and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.